So today I'm gonna to share with you something so dear to my heart, and that is the topic of miscarriage and what you need to expect after a miscarriage. So stay tuned. Hey friend, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome. If you are returning, you are awesome. Uh, here on this channel, if you are new, we talk about the journey to pregnancy for new moms, motherhood, and inspiration. And today we're gonna be talking about a subject that's probably a little taboo to talk about. We're gonna be talking about miscarriage and what are some signs and symptoms and what you need to expect when you go to the hospital or the emergency department when you're having a miscarriage. And I want to take you through uh, my nursing experience with the miscarriage, but also my personal experience as well. So let's get into the content. Let's first start off with talking about what a miscarriage is. So a miscarriage is defined as a fetus under the age of 20 weeks dying in the womb. Unfortunately, one in four women will have a miscarriage in their life, but according to the Cleveland Clinic, 80% of their demographic carried full-term babies after they've had a miscarriage. And the medical term that you'll see in hospitals for miscarriage is called spontaneous abortion. So when doctors refer or nurses refer to a spontaneous abortion, they're actually referring to a miscarriage. This is a really common misconception that a lot of patients uh, may not understand is that when we're talking about a spontaneous abortion, we're not talking about an elective abortion, but we're talking about a miscarriage because a spontaneous abortion is synonymous with a miscarriage in medical terms. Now, the most common cause of a miscarriage is a chromosomal abnormality. When, a, when the fertilized egg does not either have enough chromosomes or it has too many. So any type of chromosomal abnormality is going to be the biggest factor in causing a miscarriage. And if I can be real with you guys, like, can I be real with you? Can, can I be honest here? When I had my miscarriage, there were some questions that came up in my mind that I'm sure other women struggle with as well. I struggled with, number one, what did I do to cause this miscarriage? There is something wrong with my body. Will I ever hold a baby again? Will my body ever be able to conceive again? And how could I have prevented this miscarriage? And I think this is something that I want to address here is that we as moms and as women, we want to take the, the ownership of saying, hey, I could have done something differently because it's my body. But I wanna tell you, mom, new mom, soon to be mom, that it was not your fault. Um, majority of the times miscarriages happen because of a chromosomal abnormality. And there is nothing you could have done to prevent it. There was nothing that you could have done to change the outcome, unfortunately. Now, some signs and symptoms of a miscarriage are some spotting. Um, you'll start with light spotting and then it could progress to very heavy spotting. You'll have cramping, cramping like a period and sometimes could be even more severe than a period cramp. Uh, you could have vaginal discharge such as bleeding or tissue that comes out vaginally. Uh, and then you can also have lower abdominal cramping followed or in addition to lower back pain. Now, if you're having any of these symptoms, it is your, the best practice for you to call your OB-GYN doctor and see what they recommend you do. If they recommend you go to the emergency room, then we're gonna talk about a couple of things that you can expect in the emergency department. When you go to the emergency department, you're gonna be taken back pretty quickly. Um, just with the healthcare system, anytime, anytime that someone is actively bleeding, then you will get taken back because you are a higher priority um, as far as cases that they need to see. So you'll get taken back pretty quickly into the emergency department. And then what they'll do is they'll get an IV, they'll draw some blood. And specifically what they're gonna be looking for is a complete blood count, which is called the CBC. And they're gonna be taking a pregnancy serum test, which is the HCG test. And just to confirm that you are pregnant. Now, what the CBC or complete blood count will tell you is if you are over bleeding. Now, it's gonna show you your hemoglobin and hematocrit, and that just says how much, pretty much, blood is in your body. 
And if there is a low number of that, then they know that you're internally bleeding and you're bleeding too much. So they need to do more interventions. Now, if that hemoglobin and hematocrit number is normal, then they will just go ahead and do follow-up exams such as an ultrasound and um, wait to see what your HCG levels are. Now they take this HCG level to number one, make sure that you're pregnant, but number two is to compare the number that you had before at your OB-GYN department's uh, blood work. What they can do it, that your OB-GYN department does is um, they can take the initial HCG test number and then compare it to your emergency department test number. And if there is a decline in number, then that is indicative that you potentially could be having a miscarriage. And they'll also schedule an ultrasound. And what this ultrasound will tell you is if um, your baby either has heartbeat or does not have a heartbeat. Um, and if they see a fetal pole, or if, they're, if they see any type of um, picture that suggests that you are actively miscarrying. So in my story, I don't think I told this, but uh, when I went to the ultrasound tech, she was amazing. I will say she was by far the best person that I could have spoken to that night. I was in the ultrasound room for about 30 minutes and from start to finish, she showed me on the screen what I was seeing. Granted, I did tell her, hey, I'm a nurse. I would like to see what you're seeing and show me the video um, and show me the images. And she really explained everything so well. And I knew that I was having an active miscarriage because from the time that I started the ultrasound, my uterus and uh, embryo had been higher up my, my stomach and closer towards the end of the ultrasound, it was closer towards my cervix and you can actually see my cervix opening. So we, so we both knew that I was actively miscarrying and when the doctors actually told me, oh, you're having a threatened miscarriage, we can't actually definitively tell you whether you're having a miscarriage or not, I knew in my mind from the ultrasound, it was inevitable for me to have a miscarriage because number one, the uterus was slowly making its way towards the cervix and out. And number two, my cervix was opening. So I will say that the ultrasound tech made my experience worth going to the emergency department. Now, if your body doesn't naturally expel the fetus or embryo, then there is a procedure that we do, or the doctors do, to manually take out the fetus and embryo. And that's called a DNC. Now, my specialty, if you didn't know, is critical care. I've been in critical care for about 10 years and I absolutely love it. And I recently actually switched over to doing more surgery, um, pre-op and post-op and PACU and getting people ready to go into surgery. So I have seen my fair share of DNCs and I'm gonna be talking to you next week about what you need to expect for a DNC procedure uh, before, during, and after. So definitely make sure that you stick around next week to see what you need to expect. So with that guys, I will see you next week on our continuing our series. And remember, it's always a great day to grow. Grow in life, grow your baby, grow emotionally, and grow spiritually. Can't wait to see you in next week's video. Bye.